Well, it was an amazing show. It's been a long four days. I am super, super tired. My feet hurt. My wallet is empty. So let us get the heck out of here. I gotta drive back up to LA. And uh, yeah, let's go back to my place, check out the books I got and see how I did overall. And uh, see you later, San Diego. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that montage. I had an amazing time at San Diego Comic-Con. It was a really great experience. Met a lot of awesome people, saw a lot of really cool things. I even got to speak on a panel. So I got this little souvenir with my name on it, which is pretty cool. Shout out to Efren from Passpoint Comics for putting that together. Uh, Ian from Hood Rat and John from Bronze and Modern Gods. Uh, we had a great time speaking. Uh, and maybe most importantly, I was also able to pick up a lot of great comic books. You know, when it was, it was funny because when I originally showed up, I was looking at some of those wall books and some of those stickers, and I gotta say, they were a lot higher uh, in most cases than I felt like they should have been. So I wasn't too confident that after doing, you know, the whole weekend that I was gonna have books to show off to you guys, but, you know, I was able to dig around in those bins and look for opportunities, and there were opportunities. Like, if you spent some time and you got into those bins, every now and again, you would come across some really, really great books, and I think I was able to do that for myself. I got a lot of really cool keys. I picked up a lot of Avengers stuff that I needed for my Grail run, and I actually did do one big, big major move uh, that I will be talking about in my video tomorrow, but let's talk about the books that I was able to pick up for myself, and the first book I'm going to show you guys is definitely the coolest one that I got. Uh, this one is one that I've wanted to have in my collection for, for a little bit of time now, but I've never really come across it at a decent price. Uh, but the one I was able to pick up for myself is Marvel Super Heroes number 20. First maybe solo story or solo title, if you want to call it that, for the character of Doctor Doom. Of course, Doctor Doom makes his first appearance in Fantastic Four number five, a book I would absolutely love to have in my collection. Uh, but it's becoming, you know, increasingly more evident to me that I'm probably not going to be able to get that one. So I've been thinking about, you know, other opportunities for Doctor Doom books. Uh, and this one is the one that, for me personally, I've always wanted to have for the character. Uh, you know, there's the Fantastic Four annual that has his origin story. There's some other great Doctor Doom keys, but I really love this one personally uh, due to the fact that it says Doctor Doom right there in the title. It's got a great cover, and I feel like this one matches very well aesthetically with the other big premiere issues that I have, you know, behind me with like Iron Man and Captain America. So I definitely identified this book as being a nice key that could go on the wall behind me. Um, I saw this one being uh, listed at 170. It's graded around a 2.5 to a 3. I was able to negotiate with a dealer, ended up getting it for 150, which, you know, it's a pretty pricey book still, but at the same time, I feel like this is a one to have for the next you know few years for the MCU. Uh, Doctor Doom's going to be a huge character. Currently, the rumors right now are that he's going to show up maybe in Black Panther number two. So that's very, very exciting. And when I saw the opportunity to jump on this thing, I thought I had to have it. I think it presents really, really nicely in the Smilar bag. I mean, if you saw it up close, you would see that there's you know a little bit of a spine split down here, some color breaks and things like that. But 150 for this book, I think it's a pretty good price. I mentioned how I thought that this would be a great book to invest in on a hundred dollar budget. Luckily for me, I was able to pick it up for $85. Uh, this one right here is Marvel Premiere number 47. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the first appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man. Uh, of course, Scott Lang is the Ant-Man in the MCU, played by Paul Rudd. Uh, we got Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Uh, or Ant-Man 3, Ant-Man and the Wasp 3, Quantum Media coming out next year at the top of the year to kick off the Phase 5, I guess it is. And this is a book that I think, uh, even right now, I still feel like it's undervalued in the market. I mean, I feel like this is a, a really underappreciated Bronze Age key. And I really do believe that, you know, even though Hank Pym has always been identified with being the Ant-Man character, I feel like Scott Lang has really taken over uh, the future of the Ant-Man character. I mean, even in current Marvel continuity, uh, you know, when we get books that feature Ant-Man, it's typically Scott Lang, although I do think that there's going to be a Hank Pym miniseries. But it does feel like Disney is looking to um, Scott Lang to sort of carry the mantle. And I really do feel like Quantum Mania is going to be maybe one of the most important movies of Phase 5 due to the fact that it's going to be setting up Kang the Conqueror. So I really feel like that movie is going to surprise people. And this is going to be a book that is going to be highly desired in the market. So when I came across this one, Guy had it listed at 95. He gave me a deal. I think I, I, I picked up a few books from him. So I think when it all you know shakes down, I was able to get it for around 85. So really happy to score another copy of that one because I definitely think it's one for the future. All right, this next book I got right here is one that I think is just a great undervalued key comic book. But 
but this one is Thor number 137. And what is the significance of this? Well, this, of course, would be the first appearance of the character known as Ulick. Ulick is sort of a troll, brutish character who is a rival to Thor. And actually, I would make the argument that he's one of Thor's uh, bigger villains. Maybe not the top tier villain. You know, I think you got to go with Loki and Enchantress and characters like that. But not too far under that, I do think you could slide Ulick into that equation. For a long time, they was speculated that maybe Ulick was going to be showing up in the Loki series. That certainly didn't pan out. I suppose he could show up in U uh, Loki season two. I highly doubt that though. Um, but Ulick still is a great character for the Thor mythos. I mean, this book right here is a great Thor book. Um, I think this copy probably grades out to be like a VG copy, but I found it for 15 bucks. I felt like that was a pretty good deal overall. Um, one that I think is, is still a great book to have in the collection and I was happy to pick it up. All right, the next book I got right here is another Thor book. Obviously I was in the Thor section. This one right here is Thor number 148. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this would be the first appearance of the character known as the Wrecker. Wrecker is the leader of the Wrecking Crew. And with the new She-Hulk uh, trailer, we were actually able to see that the Wrecking Crew is going to be in it. Now, they're not, it doesn't look like they're doing the costume version of the characters. I really hope that eventually we see the costume version of the characters, um, although I would suspect that we're probably not going to get it. You know, uh, th their costumes, I assume, cost a lot of money from the VFX world. We know that they're probably spending all their money trying to make She-Hulk look better. So I don't think that we're going to be seeing uh, comic accurate versions of the Wrecker, but this is still a great book, uh, even all, you know, movie spec aside. Uh, the Wrecker, a great B-tier villain. I always love this character. And I was able to get this one as well for $20. Yeah, it was $20 after I got the deal. Uh, this copy probably nets out to be like another like VG plus copy or so. So not too bad overall. But again, I'll take books like this all day. You know, these kind of keys within Thor run, the early Silver Age keys, you can find them at good deals at that price range. Uh, I, I definitely think you can't go wrong. All right, this next book right here is one that I've actually never owned in my collection. I really, really wanted to pick this one up. I was actually able to find it for $20. But this one here is actually Tales to Astonish number 91. And what is the significance of this? Well, this would be the second appearance of the character known as Abomination. It would be his first cover appearance. And it's the book that I just think about where if this was actually the cover of Tales uh, to Astonish number 90, which is the Abomination's first appearance, I really wonder what the price of Tales to Astonish number 90 would be. I mean, especially now that we're going to get Abomination in the She-Hulk show. I know Abomination has been sort of a fool me once, fool me twice situation with the comic book market. His book absolutely skyrocketed when we saw him come back in Shang-Chi. But I think in She-Hulk, uh, it, his book is slowly going to rise again because I think Abomination is going to be like kind of the uh, uh, surprising character of the She-Hulk show. And it definitely feels like Abomination is going to be the Hulk replacement on the Thunderbolts roster when we eventually get the Thunderbolts movie. So I really do like Tales to Astonish 90 and 91 uh, as being good books for the future. And when I found this one, it's a nice mid-grade, very uh, presents very well, $20. Had to pick it up. Never had it in the collection. I, I've, I've been someone who has been able to pick up many copies of 90, but I was never able to find 91, uh, and I really do love that cover. Uh, next one here, speaking of The Incredible Hulk, I was actually able to find a copy of The Incredible Hulk number 105. This is just that classic cover that was sort of referenced in the Immortal Hulk run uh, that would be the actual first appearance of The Missing Link. Uh, you know, I don't really think The Missing Link is too big a character or what makes this book significant. I just think that this is a great classic Silver Age cover. This one right here I was able to find for $20, so $20 was kind of my sweet spot for some of these uh, early or Silver Age books. Uh, this one right here probably grades out to be like a 4.0, 4.5, or 5.0, uh, but it presents really nicely. The colors on it are really good. Uh, anytime you get these brown covers, I'm, I'm always really drawn to them uh, in the Silver Age. I mean, I think about like the, the Tales to Astonish cover with Hulk and Silver Surfer on it. Uh, I love some of the Doctor Strange covers that have the brown covers. So I really uh, am always drawn to them. And that one in particular always catches my eye. All right, this next book here is one that I was able to find for $20. Uh, just a great Copper Age book. Of course, I'm talking about The Punisher, number one, Five Finger Punisher uh, holding the bazooka in the window right here. Uh, this is one that has really, really skyrocketed over the last, I'd say, six months or so. You know, for a long time, this was that book that would always sit at that twenty to twenty-five dollar price range. Uh, but now I see a lot of copies going more around that forty to fifty. So when it came across this one uh, being sold at twenty dollars, I was like, all right, I'm picking that one up. Uh, it's not a perfect. It's not a nine point eight candidate. It definitely has a few pressable defects on it. Maybe a minor color break. Uh, somewhere here on the cover. But, you know, for $20, I still thought it was a good good pickup. You know, it's definitely a 
I'd say 9092 candidate. Uh, so I think it's still a good pickup. A lot of the Punisher keys are starting to go up. You know, there's been rumors that John Bernthal is maybe going to reprise his role as the Punisher in the MCU, but it'll be interesting to see if that happens. And I think this one right here, outside of ASM 129, I mean, I think there's Punisher 1, the limited series, that's a really attractive uh, Punisher key to get your hands on. But I think this one right here brings back the member berries for a lot of people. And that's why I really like it every time I see it at that $20 price point. All right, the next book I picked up for myself is one that I actually got not too long ago at the Nearman Sunday show that I went to. But this one right here is Secret War number two. And what is the significance of this? Well, this, of course, is the first appearance of the character known as Quake. Now, for those of you who have watched S.H.I.E.L.D., you guys would know that Chloe Bennett played the character of Quake in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show. And there's been a lot of rumors that Chloe Bennett is going to be returning to the MCU. A lot of people don't know yet where she is going to be showing up. Some people are pointing to Secret Invasion is when she's going to make her character reveal. Uh, but there's talks that Chloe Bennett is going to be playing the role of Quake. It'll be interesting to see if that happens. I mean, I definitely could see it. Chloe Bennett is like a young star that, you know, has a lot of influence. I'm sure that Marvel would want to utilize that for their marketing. And this book right here is where she makes her first appearance. Found this one for $10. So a great price, in my opinion. Uh, again, maybe not a 9.8 candidate, but certainly uh, in the nine. So I felt like that was a really good price for that thing. And I'll take those all day. All right. And the last book I picked up before I sort of run through all the Avengers books I picked up for myself is this one right here, one that actually sits on the wall behind me, but I decided to get another copy because the price was so good. This one right here is X-Men number 60, first appearance of the character known as Sauron. Of course, this is the great Neil Adams cover that features this character. Uh, got this one for 40, which was a really great deal. I feel like this is one that typically sells on eBay around that $100 price point. Uh, and it's a really nice presenting copy, although it does have a chip down here at the bottom. You can see it's kind of missing that corner, which is why the dealer had it priced at 40. But again, other than that, presents beautifully. I think that this is a really cool book. There's been a lot of speculation that we might see the Savage Land at some point in the MCU. Sauron, of course, comes from the Savage Land, has those connections, and is also an X-Men villain that we actually haven't seen done before. So I really like the opportunity with a lot of the X-Men villains who haven't yet been utilized in the Fox films as being something that Marvel would want to pursue because they're different than that of the ones that we've already seen. So uh, this is a really great key, in my opinion, one that I was happy to find and happy to pick up. Uh, I was very, very worried that after I bought this thing, that it was maybe going to be one of those sneaky JCPenney reprints. Uh, if you guys haven't seen Como's video, go go check them out. But uh, there actually are reprints of this thing. But luckily, uh, I did not get fooled this time around. Uh, because I was able to check the back and it was, in fact, the Silver Age copy. Uh, this book right here, I was actually able to get a shout outs to Reggie Collects and Doug Bratton for their Isolation comic book. You might have seen them in my montage, but they came out with their comic book recently, Isolation number one. Uh, those guys are doing their thing with it. So I, I was happy to support them, pick up a copy, see them at the show. We, we had a great uh, conversation, had some coffee together. So definitely go check that one out as well. And then the last batch of books, let me flip through them really quickly. These are all just Avengers books that I needed for my Avengers run. Uh, nothing too significant here other than these are just the run filler books that I needed at prices that I felt like were okay or I was comfortable paying. You know, for, for these run fillers, I'm trying to not go above $20 because, you know, I got to I gotta save my money. So this one right here, Avengers number 27, found this one. I think I would have ended up paying $12 for it. Avengers 35 right here, another probably $12 book. Avengers 77, got that one for $10. Avengers 84, got this one for $10. Avengers 86, uh, this is the second appearance of the Squadron Supreme, got this one for 15. Avengers 89, uh, this is a, a cool book in my opinion. This is actually the first issue of the Kree Scroll War. So I don't know if this book has any spec value in terms of what we are gonna see with the Secret Invasion and going into the Marvels, if the Kree Scroll, Roller, Scroll War is going to be appropriate or adapted, but this is actually the first issue of that particular uh, comic run. Uh, of course, this is sort of the Neil Adams time, uh, but this is issue 89 that kicks it off. Got this one for 20 bucks. Uh, a pretty good price. That one is usually one that is marked up quite a bit. Uh, similarly, I got this one right here, Avengers 95. Got that one for $7. And then Avengers number 97. Also got this one for $7. This would be the finale, the final issue of the Kree Scroll War uh, and that Neil Adams run. So that is my comic book haul. Got a lot of great books. Definitely really happy about this one right here. Uh, probably gonna go on the wall behind me, so I'm super excited 
to add this one to the collection. Again, I had an amazing time at San Diego Comic-Con. I'll probably have more content to come talking about the show. Uh, maybe I'll do a video where I sort of break down all of the you know Marvel Phase 5 and Phase 6 news, talk about some of the books that relate to it. Uh, overall, as far as like, the market is concerned, my feeling on the show was that you know it was a great show, a lot of amazing books there, a lot of big dealers. The prices were you know hit and miss. I mean, there were some high prices, there were some low prices. Uh, so you just had to really, really do your diligence and dig through those bins. Uh, I didn't really get a sense that there was any particular book that was really heavily being pursued at the show. I did feel like people were open to getting some of those She-Hulk books. I thought that that was kind of surprising. I heard a lot of people uh, you know, looking for She-Hulk or digging through the She-Hulk bins. Uh, I heard a lot of people looking for Spawn. I think that that was coming off the heels that uh, Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee are doing a Spawn Batman thing. So I heard a lot of people asking about Spawn, number one. Um, I did see a couple of people looking at some Submariner stuff, I think due to the excitement of Black Panther, uh, but I didn't necessarily get any other excitement or any other hype uh, for any other you know speculation. Like it's not like everybody was going crazy for Adam Warlock keys or whatever the case may be. But that was my haul. That was my experience at San Diego Comic-Con. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.